Hi guys, it's Mary. Welcome back to my face. Today we are going to do this Sydney Grace eye using these shadows right here. That It's got that nice green look, but it's real smoky and sultry and yet gold at the same time. I want to call attention to my earrings really quick. These were sent to me along with two other very beautiful pairs of earrings that were handmade for yours truly from Cowgirl Cat in Texas. Thank you so much, Kat. I love them all so much. I pretty much primed everything except my mouth. And today I'm going to use this. And I wanted to just show it to you real quick because some of you have asked me about it. And I got the prices right here for this stuff if you want to pause that and see. But this is it. I'm going to go ahead and put it on because I want you to see what it does to my mouth. Uh, it feels so good. You know what it reminds me of is the Dior those lip glows and then you can just keep an eye on my mouth they have the overnight mask the lip gloss which you can kind of look and see that I've only had this a couple days and look how much I've used this because I keep putting it on because <laughs> it gives me see it's starting to change my mouth already it's it's giving me a color so when I take off my mask I have a color on my lips but uh, it's also conditioning my mouth too. I don't know that this is the color we're gonna go for today. I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll like it with this look, but I just wanted to mention these. I just love that pink, that it turns my mouth. And of course you can put on a little bit more, which it does get darker throughout the day if you keep putting it on, cause I keep doing that. <laughs> but the thing is when it comes off on my mask, so what, <laughs> right? This is what I picked out of my palette of new shadows that I got, and I'm sorry, I don't know if they are all the Mountain Bundle. I hope they are. Well, I've not used them yet. I've only swatched them, and now I'm gonna swatch them for you so you know what we are doing. We're going to take Vanguard, and then this mat right here is called Backwoods. Let's go in the opposite direction. This is Trailhead. Look at that. Ooh, I'm excited. This one's called Escape. Let's put Escape right here. And then this one is a maybe. I hope I get to use it. It is called Commission. And let's put Commission right here. Oh, oh my gosh. Focus on that. Oh. But to start with, we'll use Drift as normal. You know, I usually use something from the crease up. I'm going to use my Sigma E40. It's just a fluffy brush that I like. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do there. I'm just taking my E40 by Sigma, which I told you would have been part of the Glitzy Fritzy eye set because I use it a lot. But I wanted to keep the price down, so I cut this brush. There we go. But <laughs> this is an excellent brush. Okay, get your Glitzy Fritzy essential eye set. Here we go. Let's take the E35 today. We always start with the E25. Let's start with the E35 today. What shall we do? I'm going to get some backwoods on there. Let's start high on the crease with that and just circle it in. I don't have a candle lit back there today because it's too freaking hot in here i don't know if i'm gonna be able to stand this or not <laughs> all right i'm gonna take vanguard and deepen this up right here in the crease do that and remember what i'm doing is i'm coming right underneath here and i'm hitting that orbit bone to find my crease because you know what? I used a different primer today. Can you see this is sticking over here? Mm. <sighs> That's not good. I don't like that. I guess I'm going to have to get rid of that primer. This is not the Sigma primer. It's this one. <laughs> I don't recall it doing that before, but maybe I just didn't get enough drift over there. This is why I use something like drift first from the crease up. I must not have got enough over there. I think I'm gonna do a modified for me kind of halo eye hair <laughs> with trailhead. And this is my E46. I'm gonna bring that in here first. I'm gonna come back here 
on the end of this brush so that I'm just getting a little bit and we're going to put it in the inner corner and dog get a little more and we're gonna put it on the outer corner and we're leaving right there in the middle blank and I think I will take my E36 now and come into that same shade. So I'm going to tip my head back a little bit so that I can see. And I'm just lightly pushing that across. Right there in the crease. Darken that up. Yeah, baby. With my eye slack like that, I'm going to need to make sure I get this shade showing here. I mean, if I've got my eyebrows up, which I do a lot, but if I just relax my eyes, then I need to get an eye lift. <laughs> but I always think about Meryl Streep in that movie, It's Complicated. <laughs> Remember when she goes, she just walked around like this, because hers is actually, in, you know, making her eye so she can't see very well. <laughs> she finds out that, you know, she's going to have a headache for like six months. So she decides, nope, that's not for her. But recently, somebody asked me if I'd ever had any work done on my eyes. And if so, what doctor did I use? And da da da. And that, like, kind of totally made my day. <laughs> like, no, I've had no work done on my eyes. I've never had Botox. I've never had fillers. I've never had any plastic surgery, you know? So that just, like, Wow, thank you. Now we're going to get the E55, which is the shader here, and we're going to take Escape. I'm going to just swipe down through there once, because I, I kind of want to see what it's going to do on its own with a brush. Let's just pop that right in the middle of the eye. But like I said, actually, I think cut, definitely cut crease is when you take the concealer. But I've seen people use concealer with a halo eye too. So now I'm going to take my pinky into that shade. And we're going to pop it right here. Oh my gosh. I just lit that up. I'll take my E46 and I'm going to come into the other color, which was, what was it, commission? Yes. And bring that just right here, right there on the inner corner. Okay, you know what? We're going to put on the rest of our makeup and talk to you about movies. Okay, a movie, 9 to 5. Do you guys ever put movies in your watch list for them to go on sale? I did. <laughs> I mean, I do. Well, anymore, it's got to be a really, really good movie that I just love for me to pay that kind of money. I'm just not going to do it, okay? So, but anyway, 9 to 5. I got it for like 4 bucks, 4.99, I think it was. It was their 40th anniversary deal. Can you believe that? I mean, first I thought, that is a lie. That movie has not been around for 40 years. Yes, it has. <laughs> I actually did the math because I just I could not believe that this movie's been around that long. <laughs> it sure has. I've always loved that movie. And I particularly love that song, 9 to 5. Anyway, I watched this movie for like a week straight. I just kept watching it. And I watched it with the commentary on also. But just the memories. When the doors open to Consolidated and Judy and Violet get off the elevator for her first day to go hunt her a locker for that hat. <laughs> um, the sound, the clackety clacketing of the Selectric typewriters. Do you guys remember Selectric typewriters? I know you do, if you worked in an office. How many of you were secretaries in an office at any point in the 80s? Okay, this movie started a revolution because the three of them are talking in the commentary about how, and this was true, there really wasn't any such thing as sexual harassment until 9 to 5 came out and it like opened up. In fact, there was a whole women's movement. There's like a union that is called 925, 925, <laughs> that came out of that movie. Um, but 
I mean, I remember working in the office setting when, I mean, guys didn't expect me to sleep with them. You know, that, that didn't happen. But, you know, they absolutely did think it was okay to just pinch my butt, you know. <laughs> they did think it was okay to snap my bra strap, uh, smack my butt, make jokes about the size of my boobs, you know. Like my desk sat right in front of the elevators and the guys would get on the elevators because they didn't have any work to do, apparently. <laughs> they are hanging around, going to have cigarettes. When Back then we could smoke at our desk, but they, they always left. They were probably going next door to the fifth because we all went after work to drink at the fifth. But they were probably, that's probably where they were going. I was just too stupid to realize <laughs> that they were going to, and that's probably why they had so much courage to do the things they did too, is because they were popped, <laughs> possibly. But they would ride the elevator up and down and they would press the floor and when the elevators would open, that's my desk right in front of them. And they would go, Mary, show us your... I'm like, why do they get to do that? But back to the original question. Do you guys remember selective typewriters? Oh, who remembers taking shorthand in school? I took shorthand. The only thing I can halfway remember is how to write my first name in shorthand now. I really wasn't good <laughs> at shorthand. <laughs> and they had dictation machines, so I don't even know why I had to take shorthand in the first place. I never really had to use it, thank the Lord. Remember the selectric typewriters and the fonts on them, I mean, it didn't have keys that when you typed, it uh, is an electric typewriter, it didn't have keys. It had a, a little round ball that had fonts all over it. And then you like lifted up a tab and it would pull off and you could put a new one on. So I ordered my own, <laughs> I actually paid for these while I was in school because I knew I would have a job with a selectric typewriter and <laughs> I wanted to be able to change the fonts. Thought, like pretty scriptive ones. <laughs> They don't let you do that. I did used to get into a little bit of trouble trying to change the rules all the time. <laughs> I mean, I would like make up my own letterheads and stuff. I don't have a title. I am a secretary <laughs> to someone who does have a title and I'm making up my own stationery. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And I used to be able to type pretty well. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what happened with the computer, you would think. But no, I don't. I really don't type as well as I did on the typewriter. But you know what? Back then, remember, who remembers that making mistakes back then, it wasn't just like now where you just back up and delete it. You had carbon copies that you were, and for those of you who are too young to remember, carbon paper uh, was used whenever you wanted to send a carbon copy, a CC. You see that at the top of your emails, CC and BC, blind copy. Um, whenever you wanted to send a carbon copy, that's where CC comes from. When you're CCing somebody on an email, okay, that originates in the office, carbon copy. You literally took carbon paper behind the original. Maybe you had like three carbon copies that were going out. You'd have typewriter paper, a piece of carbon paper, typewriter paper, a piece of carbon paper. <laughs> You make a mistake, you have to take white out and you have to put it on all of them, wait on them to dry, put them back together and start over. So you really kind of had to be a, a pretty good typist that didn't make very many errors in order to work in an office. They didn't appreciate that I was trying to make everything more beautiful. It's got to be a more beautiful world. Isn't it funny all these years later, I'm still trying to make things beautiful. <laughs> Listen to the commentary. And it's funny because... <laughs> Jane Fonda, Dolly Parton, and Lily Tomlin. They keep forgetting they're supposed to be talking, right? And then they start watching the movie and remembering. So, you know, if you think about it, if they hadn't seen it for years and with all the other work that they did, they would have forgotten what was going on and they'd be just like watching it. And then, of course, that would bring up memories for them of, you know, what was happening around that time or whatever. And I just, I got a kick out of listening to the movie again on the commentary. But I do have to say that they, the director, he was in there too. And they made a mistake. I know they did. I know that they did. They're talking at this one point, they're talking about the car. 
that they're driving. Remember when the three of them are at the hospital and they steal the body and put it in the back of the car and then they take off in Violet's car. But it's a it's either a 68 or a 69. I'm thinking maybe a 69, but I could be wrong. It could be a 68. Maybe that um, I would almost bet money that this car that Violet had was a 69 Buick Skylark, not an Oldsmobile. I don't know if he had that confused with a Cutlass or what his deal was, but they're like, what kind of car was that? And he says, it's an Oldsmobile. And I'm like, no, it is not. That's a Buick Skylark. And no, I didn't have a Buick Skylark, <laughs> but my best friend at the time had a Buick Skylark, a 1969 Buick Skylark that I loved. And, and that car was prettier than this one. <laughs> it was a burgundy maroon color. And I loved that car. So that's not that I'm some kind of a, a car buff or anything. I just happened to have loved the 1969 Buick Skylark. And so I just, I know what it looks like. Anyway, do you remember the scene where they get pulled over because they have um, a tail light out because they have a body in the trunk, right? As soon as I saw that cop come up to them, it reminded me of when I got pulled over one time in the 80s by a motorcycle cop. <laughs> and I was going to work. You know, back then in the 80s, I had a little smart mouth on me and I was always getting in trouble. I don't know if it was that I didn't respect authority or what my deal was. I didn't dislike policemen. Well, actually, I kind of did have a thing out on policemen at that time because of this cop, the way he treated me when I worked at Pop and Fresh Pies. And incidentally, look at this. I know, I'm just all over the place. Look, it's my Pop and Fresh Pies button. I used to have to wear this with my name tag. My mom found that amongst some things that she had of mine. And it's my Pop and Fresh Pies button. Uh, I've been going over there a lot, helping to take care of her with baths and stuff so it's been a treat getting to spend more time with her and stuff that she gave me that button doesn't it just slay you how we just jump around here <laughs> back to the cop story i'm gonna be late for work one day and i am just barreling down the road and unbeknownst to me there was a policeman on a motorcycle off on a side road. He wants me to stop. So what does he do? He walks out into the middle of the road and he's doing this. And I like hit the brakes. <laughs> he, and I'm mad because now I'm definitely gonna be late. <laughs> I know, I have toed now. Now I'm definitely gonna be late. And what a dummy. He could have got himself killed. So I decided to tell him that. <laughs> he comes up to the window. If we're gonna be honest, I didn't use these words. Okay, imagine the words I may have used when he came up to the window and I very indignantly said, what do you think you're doing? I could have killed you. Is that what you want? You want to die today? Even in 1980, that was not something you could say to a policeman. Nope. He pulls out his little book and starts writing me a ticket. At that point, that was like the second time in my life in a pretty short period of time that I had acquired a ticket that I probably wouldn't have got if I could have just kept my smart mouth shut, if I could have just had a little bit of respect for the officer that pulled me over. But no, <laughs> no, he wrote me out a ticket and he let me know that I needed to, you know, that I wouldn't have got the ticket and he would have just let me off with a warning, except no, you gotta be so disrespectful and talk to a policeman like that. The first time I do believe I ran a yellow light is what it was. And my mom and dad were eating at the restaurant that I was pulled over in front of with a friend of theirs. And they were like looking out the window and there I am pulled over by this cop. <sighs> anyway, so the, the policeman, I was mad because now I'm gonna get into trouble, not only with the police, but with my parents when I get home. And he walked up to the car and I just thought he was being really cocky. <laughs> and he said, do you know what red means? And I said, stop. And I was having an attitude. And he said, very good. Like I'm a dummy, right? Very good. He's clapping his hands. And he said, 
So I presume that you know what green means. And I said, go again. Very good. So then he says, so what do you suppose you're supposed to do when there's a yellow light? And I said, rush like hell because it's getting ready to turn red, which is exactly what I did. And he said, and I'm going to exactly give you a ticket. Yep. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how we got on that subject. <laughs> Let's go back to the movie. I just absolutely loved getting to hear the commentary of 9 to 5 and also just reminisce with the fashion. I mean, do you remember like clutch purses? Remember that? Remember the shoes that we wore and how every girl, you did not go bare-legged. You wore pantyhose. That was a must. Everybody did it. Even with shorts. Do you remember that in the summer wearing shorts with pantyhose under it? <laughs> and I, I was just watching this and thinking, oh my gosh. And I also remember making that walk into the office, not to the soundtrack of 9 to 5, that would have made it a lot more fun. <laughs> but, you know, in the winter time, wearing tennis shoes and then switching your shoes once you got to the office to your pumps or whatever because you weren't going to walk that far in those. Or moon boots. Do you remember moon boots? I loved my moon boots. <laughs> okay, I gotta, you got to be careful with this mascara that you don't get too much. Okay, I'm just going to tell you, no, I never do notice the concealer thing <laughs> that I got on my eyeshadow. But I'm stopping to tell you about this mascara. On my finished look, make sure that you pay attention to the transfer of the mascara up on top of my eyeshadow at the top. That was what I was trying to say in my review, that this mascara does. Let's go back in here and get... What was this? Backwoods again? Let's get backwoods. And I'm going to bring it under here. And then I think I'm going to get some commission on here too, because I really wanted to use more of that. And let's put it right there and just bring it right there. Just a little bit. Really pretty. I'm going to do my hair and I'll be right back. Here's what I'm talking about right here. And when I turn my head, there's a little bit right there. Now, <laughs> in my review of this mascara, I was saying that this mascara I wouldn't recommend for anybody with long eyelashes. When I got done with the eye look, I went off camera and I put on one more coat. And that was just enough to make these eyelashes bonk, bonk, bonk right there. <laughs> of which, I didn't notice because I was in a hurry to get back. So yeah, <laughs> what would my video be if the eye look was actually perfect? <laughs> anyway, that's what I wanted to point out about the Lash Doll. Why when I rated it, I gave it what I did. This was what I was talking about. It can totally ruin your eye look. And because this is a gel mascara, if you try to wipe that off, it just makes a bigger mess. Or it does on me anyway. If you guys don't know it, I want you to know you are the best part of the Fritzy family. And if you're not having a blessed day, go out and be a blessing to somebody else. And until next time, love you, see ya. Bye. And I'm out. Here we go around as our dolls. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go around like a Sydney Grace in our shade. In our shade? No, in the trees. Yeah. All right, start over. Here we go, round in circles. Da -da 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 -da. Now I messed up again. Here we go, round in circles. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go, round like a. No, Mary, just give it up. It's a small world, after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small, small world. Is that how that goes? I don't know, but for some reason the candy man just popped in my head. I think we must have seen both of those at a thing in school or something. Because why would I think of the candy man? You know? Because the candy man can and he makes his... <laughs>
The kitty man can cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Yeah. Where's two of me? How you doing? I don't know. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I am coloring. I'm always coloring outside my lines. I'm gonna audition for a musical because I'm so good at this. Yeah! Saw Tim the Tool Man Taylor on Last Man Standing the other night. And he was going, Ooh! 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 How does Tim, Tim the Tool Man Taylor go? I don't know. Mike Baxter thought it was pretty weird, too. <laughs> or how do you know if you're a bull rider, right? You stick all these marbles in your mouth and spit one out every time you, you ride bull and when you've lost your marbles is when you know you're bull rider that's right before they get into the fight with Wes ah there's no candle back there lit anyway how do you know if you're a youtuber if you use 15 eyeshadows for absolutely no reason you're just gonna go watch TV in the living room but 15 eyeshadows will be required Okay, so what I'm going to do now is come into that green. <laughs> After I break it, it's on my pants. <laughs> help me, help me. Okay, I'm not even going to lie. I, mean, I didn't even put my pants, pull my pants off. I just took them off in the bathroom because it's so hot in here. <sighs> Mary Bob, no pants, Mary Bob. No pants. <laughs> Mary Bob, no pants, Mary Bob. No pants. Yeah, working nine to five. What a way to make a living nearly. Wait, wait, I gotta be Dolly. Ooh. Working nine to five. What a way to make a living barely getting by. It's all taken and no giving. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Is she a Dolly? You know what I didn't say? I didn't say how long it would take me to hunt tie that sexist egotistical line at the critical bigot. <laughs>